Good morning, and welcome to the 2021 Master of Science in Global Health Commencement Ceremony. My name is Madhvi Dandu, and I'm the Program Director for the Master's Program. After 13 years with the program, I'm surprised that I arrive at this day every single year wondering how time can go so fast. We have watched proudly as each of you has grown, both professionally and personally this year. The energy, hard work, generosity, and enthusiasm that each of you brought to the classroom and to each other carried you to this day, and we are immensely proud of each of you. Every day, as we live and we experience the world around us, it's hard to ignore the profound level of inequity. And this year, bearing witness to the ongoing pandemic of COVID-19 and its inequitable impact has brought our responsibility as global health professionals into even more immense focus. And while I know many times each of us felt alone, especially as we were remote all year, for me, having time with each of you every single week was centering. As much as I love the opportunity to teach and mentor, I relish the opportunity to learn. And this year, I relish learning from your lives, your ideas, and your challenges. Thank you for trusting us enough to share those things with us. Alden and I are grateful for the opportunity to direct this program. We love our work. However, the program would not function without the hard work of our staff. Minerva Lee, Darlene Mergolano, Haley Reeves, Rachel Cox, and Inez Bailey. To all of you, thank you. Additionally, our faculty, advisors, and mentors teach and support each of you with sincere dedication and enthusiasm that inspires us. Thank you to all of you. I would be remiss without mentioning four very important members of our team whose work was endless and included hours of support and encouragement. Thank you to Shivali, Brooke, Izzy, and Alyssa. And finally, we know that none of our students are here without the friends and family who have brought them here and helped them all throughout the year. To you, from us, and from our graduates, thank you. So good morning to you all. Let me start by just congratulating you on reaching this milestone. All 32 of you are graduating from our Master of Science in Global Health program. This is a program embedded in the UCSF Institute for Global Health Sciences. It began in 2008, and today the class of 21, as you graduate, are joining more than 370 alumni who are now working productively around the world. This has not been the easiest of year for you, I know. You've had to work predominantly remotely, including your capstone projects. I've had an opportunity to review many of them, and they are truly remarkable. We have learned one thing in the last year, and that is the critical role of global health. We have learned that none of us are healthy until the entire planet is healthy. So I thank you, I admire you, and I respect you for choosing a career in global health, a career that will help us make the world a healthier place for us all. So again, on this very happy day, I congratulate you all on this milestone achievement and wish you well in your future careers. Hello, my name is Liz Silva and I'm the Interim Dean of the Graduate Division and the Associate Dean for UCSF's graduate programs. UCSF's Global Health Master's degree is a demanding program even in the best of circumstances. But against the backdrop of 2020, the accomplishments of the graduates presented here today are that much more impressive. Last spring, as the COVID-19 pandemic ravaged communities everywhere, our Global Health graduates understood that health for all is achieved through the protection and empowerment of those who are most marginalized. At a time when they, like the rest of us, were deeply immersed in concern for their own loved ones, they chose to commit themselves to the important and challenging work of addressing deep inequities in healthcare and health worldwide. Throughout this incredibly challenging year, they exhibited tremendous resilience and fortitude, as well as deep compassion and selflessness. Their work is clearly more important now than ever, and I can't wait to see where their degrees take them. So let's all raise our glasses and applaud these amazing scholars and soon-to-be alumni. I hope every one of you will stay in touch with us in the Graduate Division and let us know how you're doing. Good morning, everyone. 
A warm welcome to all the students, family, and friends of our resilient class of 2021. Dear students, the presentation of your wonderful capstones is my favorite time of the year. I am always impressed and moved by the quality of your work. The class of 2021 is the 13th graduating cohort and will join more than 370 alumni who are working all around the world. This year, 32 students are graduating from the program. The last 18 months will be remembered by all of us as the most challenging period in our lifetime. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected all countries and peoples in the world with devastating health, social, and economic consequences. The current COVID pandemic is the largest global crisis since the influenza pandemic of 1918. The overall impact will be long lasting, and my hope is that the world will learn the lesson for better preparedness for future pandemics, and of course, for improving the health conditions and achieving more equity in our societies. Speaking of equity, the biggest challenge the world faces now is that of reaching universal immunological equity. Rich countries have achieved high levels of vaccination in their adult population. However, most poor countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America have little or no access to COVID vaccines. And remember, with new virus variants appearing, no country will be safe until all countries are safe. The years of 2020 and 2021 will also be remembered as once when society decided to confront the prevailing structural racism in our country. Anti-racism will be the driving force to bring about diversity, equity, and inclusion that is so desperately needed. As a student of the class of 2021, you have been a critical force for change. Today, is an important milestone in your personal life and in your professional career. Your academic life is just starting and you're commencing your journey of lifelong learning. I do hope we transmitted something more than just knowledge. I do hope this master's was not only informative, but formative and perhaps transformative. In closing, please keep in mind you are the next generation of leaders in global health. Never in history has global health been so critical to the survival of our planet. The powerful combination of innovation and technology with your passion and commitment to the right causes will bring spectacular changes in your lifetimes. My congratulations to you all in this very special day. Thank you. Class of 2021, congratulations. UCSF should have given you two degrees. The first, your Master of Science in Global Health, and the second for your tenacity, perseverance, and success against all odds in a year of the greatest pandemic in a century. 2020 has brought into focus three realities. The triumph of science with the development of mRNA vaccine, public appreciation of the noble and selfless service frontline health workers provide. And third, that as a country, we were ill-prepared for the pandemic because over decades, we failed to invest adequately in public 
in public health. As a consequence of these realities, we expect greater federal investment in global public health, greater demand for, for your services and greater career opportunities for you. Your training has never been more needed. So cheer up, celebrate, you have made it and the future is bright and is all yours. Let me leave you with the words of Claude Bissell, a former president of the University of Toronto, words that have always touched me. Risk more than others think is safe. Care more than others think is wise. Dream, dream more than others think is practical. Expect more than others think is possible. I hope you remember these words from time to time. Good luck. Good morning, class of 2021. Uh, this is a very exciting moment, I'm sure, for you, having made it through a, a pandemic year of unprecedented uh, hardship and, and difficulties for everybody. And it's just remarkable that you were able to get to this point in your, uh, in your studies and be able to move on uh, to the next phase of your lives. My name is John Ziegler. I'm the founding director of the master's degree program that was begun uh, in 2008. Uh, through the prescient uh, ideas of, of Haile DeBoss, who really anticipated that globalization was going to bring public health right up into the uh, primary uh, place that belongs in international health. So um, We've just been through a horrible pandemic. There are many lessons to be learned, and I'm not going to recapitulate any of these in any detail, but clearly vaccinations are making a, uh, making a huge mark. The population has become better educated in epidemiology as the science of public health. And uh, that messaging really uh, to the public is extremely important, especially in getting the public to understand the science behind epidemiology. So I'm hoping that as you graduate and move forward in your journey, that you will become public advocates of, sci of the public understanding of science uh, and engender the trust and, and, and authenticity that is needed to make sure that the, all the public health um, guidelines and guidance and, and principles that you've learned can be properly applied. I wish you best of luck in your continued journey. And I'm sure that this is uh, a very uh, an important milestone for all of you. Uh, my congratulations. It is now my honor to announce the 2021 John L. Ziegler Awards for Outstanding Mentor and Outstanding Capstone. In 2013, in honor of John Ziegler's retirement as the founding director of the Masters of Science in Global Health program, we established two awards that we present each year at graduation. The Outstanding Capstone Award celebrates the hard work that students engage in to complete their capstone projects, which form the backbone of the master's program. The prize is awarded to the student who has demonstrated excellent research skills and produced a masterful written capstone and oral presentation. An external panel of global health experts reviews all the student capstones and selects this award recipient. This year, the John L. Ziegler Outstanding Capstone Award will be announced at the graduation after party. Graduates, faculty, family, and friends are invited to join the after party on Zoom immediately following the conclusion of this ceremony. Now, the Outstanding Mentor Award recognizes the impact that our mentors have on the student experience with the Capstone Project and the program overall. Each year, the students write letters to nominate those mentors and advisors who significantly influence their educational experience. The master's program reviews many inspiring nominations and stories to select a mentor who has provided exceptional service to the students. This year, the winner of the John L. Ziegler Outstanding Mentor Award goes to Dr. Nadia Diamond Smith. As stated by the students who she's worked with, Dr. Diamond Smith seemed too good to be true. In the months that we have worked together, I have felt so grateful for her support and faith in me. Dr. Diamond Smith has treated me as a partner in our work and encouraged my academic and professional growth, gently guiding me through our project design and capstone period rife with complications. 
She has been a fierce advocate not only for me and my ability to do the work I want to, but for our in-country collaborators to get paid fairly for their work and for our participants to be treated with dignity. Working with her has been a joy, learning how to be a thoughtful, conscious global health partner from her example, and this has been a privilege. I am thankful to have had her as a mentor and have cultivated a connection with her. It is my great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker for this year, Dr. Eric Goosby. Eric Goosby is an internationally recognized expert on infectious diseases with a specialty in HIV AIDS, clinical care, research, and policy. During the Clinton administration, Dr. Goosby was a founding director of the Ryan White Care Act, the largest federally funded HIV AIDS program in the United States. He went on to become the interim director of the White House's Office of National AIDS Policy. In the Obama administration, Dr. Goosby was appointed ambassador at large and implemented the United States President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, or PEPFAR, which significantly expanded under his tenure life-saving HIV treatment for millions in Sub-Saharan Africa, Southeast Asia, and Eastern Europe. After serving as the U.S. Global AIDS Coordinator, he was appointed by the U.N. Secretary General as the Special Envoy on Tuberculosis, where he focused on the first ever U.N. high-level meeting on TB in 2019. He is currently a professor of medicine at the UCSF School of Medicine and leading the Center for Global Health Delivery, Diplomacy, and Economics at the Institute for Global Health Sciences. Additionally, he is a member of the Biden COVID Advisory Board, a member of the Western State Scientific Safety Review Work Group, and serves on the San Francisco Department of Public Health Policy Group for the COVID-19 response. I invited Dr. Goosby to speak because his mission and work has been the focus on equity, access, and justice. In addition, he has been a deep supporter of education and of our students. I'm incredibly grateful he accepted our invitation. Please welcome Dr. Goosby. Well, thank you to the class and to the faculty. It's an honor to address the graduating class for the master's degree in global health. I am honored to be able to speak to you today and really want to um, acknowledge the accomplishment that this day represents for you, your families, uh, the end of a long journey. And I think you have only um, the uh, need to be proud of the fact that with all the adversities that have been presented in the last year, you've been able to continue to focus on completing the curriculum so you can functionally uh, uh, return to the field for many of you uh, with an added uh, and strengthened toolbox. In 1966, Bobby Kennedy delivered a talk where he chose to use a quote, at least he attributed it to an ancient Chinese proverb, but his quote went as follows. May you live in interesting times. Like it now or not, we live in interesting times. They are times of danger and uncertainty, but they're also the most creative of any time in the history of mankind. This was stated in response to the 1968 murder assassination of Martin Luther King and the uh, riots that followed, uh, his attempt to engage in a honest uh, discussion about the loss, and his uh, ability to, uh, to relate and be empathetic to the African-American community at the time by conjuring up the loss that he had and his family suffered uh, with the loss of President Kennedy's assassination. I think I wanted to focus on the uh, second statement that he said that there that these are times of danger and uncertainty, but they're also the most creative of any time in the history of mankind. The COVID outbreak has struck me as a similar moment in our professional evolution uh, as a science, as a service to people. Uh, to deliver the science of our understanding of human physiology, its change that occurs with the introduction of disease, and how that disease moves through both an individual and a population. The convergence of unrelated events over the last 16 months has been extraordinary. We have spanned people, continents, and time, and the morbidity and mortality that has been generated has been humbling. 
COVID as of a year ago. Uh, we uh, have been in a continuous sprint with periods of, of uh, some um, relief. Uh, in July of 2020, we had 12 million global cases. We are now at 181,920,675. For global deaths in July of 2020, we had 545,728 globally. We now have 3,940,122. In the United States, out of that close to 4 million deaths, we uh, account for 604,523 of them. COVID has been humbling on so many different levels. Uh, as we move through the morbidity and mortality, our vaccination rates have climbed aggressively, faster than most developed countries. We are now at 3 trillion, 35 million, 67,537 as of today. COVID in its movement through the population has uncovered inequities in access and retention, especially in communities that historically have not been identified, entered and retained in health services, uh, a disproportionate impact. Uh, it could be COVID or any other disease that you want to name for these same populations, showing a disparity in their access to care and treatment, to diagnosis, but also in looking at the outcomes uh, the end organ damage, the result of undiagnosed high blood pressure, diabetes, coronary artery disease, those numbers show disparities in the same range that COVID has uncovered in the last year and a half. These are in inequities in our ability to identify individuals, bring them into care and services, and most importantly, often to keep them in those care and services. This is occurring as COVID showed us, not just in developing settings, but even more severely often in developing settings. And I think these differences raise questions for our academic pursuit uh, of understanding specifically how this virus not only moves through an individual to cause disease, but how it has paths of least resistance that it travels as it moves through populations. I think the other theme that rose up in the last year and a half, in addition to the disparities and inequities COVID un unearthed, is the racial disparities in perceptions of uh, safety, both in accessing medical care and services, but were reflected more in uh, the uh, interaction of individuals to police uh, interdiction services, the George Floyd, the Sandra Bland, the Rashad Brooks, uh, the Breonna Taylor uh, issues that over the last year and a half created growing realization of of lack of appreciation of what minority communities, African-American communities in particular, are confronted with when institutions such as police interdictions interface with that population. I think that the convergence of both a expanding epidemic with an rising awareness of uh, unacceptable uh, disparities in how individuals and populations within cities in the United States in particular are treated differently by law enforcement raised issues of inequity that rippled into every facet of our society, both medical as well as social, and showed us once again the role that social determinants play in pre um, determining what the health outcome will be for a given population. Over the last year, you have been given a deeper understanding. Uh, many of you came with a deep understanding when you started uh, the global health studies, but we hope we've enhanced your understanding and your toolbox of methodologies to describe accurately what 
uh, disease process is doing to a population, how that movement through the population is important to map uh, as you look at different groups who have variable degrees of interface with medical delivery systems and how our um, target in describing the disease process and the response to it uh, must include uh, defining what those outcomes are and how those outcomes are different in different populations and what are the determinants of the outcome as best as we can discern them in predicting where an outcome ultimately will fall. So I think the social inequities that are allowed to perpetuate despite documentation of the specifics of the disparities in a disease uh, have been something that I believe the academic community has for years uh, qu quantitatively attempted to characterize. But we have not found easy ways for that um, description uh, to, of the reality uh, of a disease and its impact on individuals and communities. Uh, have not found a way to strengthen our ability to identify, enter, and retain them in care. And indeed, with the COVID threat and, and challenge, we were once again reminded of the differences in the way our healthcare delivery system makes itself available to individuals and, and or doesn't and the ability of the surveillance system around that healthcare delivery system to def keep defining those outcomes over time as they are and as they change. So adjustments in the way we um, it develop and implement our programs enhances identification, entry, and retention of those underrepresented communities. I think you, as a, as a completing this curriculum, have been uh, put in a position where your understanding of, that, of those nuances of differences in access, differences in delivery systems, uh, as they uh, inform imp uh, and, and uh, create different outcomes, uh, are the um, tools that we need to explain to political policymakers that the struggle to achieve universal health coverage is still in front of us. There are elements of it that are present in developing and develop as well as developing in developed and developing settings that we need to, to unpack more specifically. And I would say that in that understanding, because you have that understanding and the tools to quantitate it, uh, our challenge as an academic uh, contribution to a uh, pandemic threat is to further refine the alignment of our surveillance with our budget development as a function of which populations it does or does not impact and to use uh, that budget development for the upcoming year to understand what changes we need to make in our investment portfolios to, uh, to increase that impact in the populations that have been underrepresented. That requires a robust and healthy surveillance system that feeds into strategic planning discussions, but ultimately ends annually in the budget discussion for the upcoming year. So that revolving door orchestration uh, that I hope you have a, a deeper uh, degree of understanding of the importance of and the methodologic tools to uh, accurately monitor uh, the, the differences and impact of a given intervention as you move through an implementation period. You are now in that special group where you're understanding of the disease matched with your understanding of how it's how that disease is moving through the population with your methodologic tools to describe it at your ready are going to be the catalytic uh, piece 
that we hope informs ministries of health and Department of Health discussions around these inequities that continue to propagate in, as I said, both a developed and developing uh, setting. Um, I did wanna say that you are uh, at the peak of your knowledge at this point. Uh, uh, people who are finishing a curriculum often don't realize that from here on out, uh, in terms of raw, uh, I'd say, uh, quantitative data uh, as, uh, amassed and com uh, under your command, uh, you get in a curve that tends to be a negative slope as you get older. Uh, there are bursts of clarity in specifics, but your overarching understanding of the entire continuum of the challenge is, uh, is about to peak and diminish. Uh, in that, your understanding of the specific challenges in front of you uh, grows. And it is that uh, utility of having a toolbox that will allow you to apply it to problems that we, can, we do not know what they are yet. Uh, we can anticipate areas of the, of the challenges that will be in front of us but the orchestration of all the unmet needs will again require uh, interpretation of data and surveillance systems that feed the data into the policymaking machine uh, to make the correct decisions to maximize your ability to drop morbidity and drop mortality. I want to just say um, the unique um, message that COVID gave to developed settings is that our delivery systems have not been robust in the response. We have had people suffer and die because of that lack of uh, uh, efficiency in our response. And we have structural barriers in the development of private sector and public sector purviews and scope of activity uh, undefined in our developed settings uh, that needs to be further unpacked, defined, refined, uh, and brought back to a realistic, fair implementation effort. And I think your toolbox, your understandings are gonna be the key, um, the key catalysts in precipitating out a uh, movement forward linear movement, progress on these issues. Uh, and I want to applaud you for seeing the need for that and for focusing your professional careers, at least in part, on achieving it. I wanted to end with just a comment on a personal note. Um, this work is going to be ongoing. Uh, it requires a commitment that often pulls you out of your homes, out of your uh, 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 academic uh, work settings for long periods of time. In some instances, you actually are moving for years in your commitment to a project. Uh, this is the nature of the art, but in that art, I think an understanding that capacity expansion needs to continue to be in the countries that we are working for and with, that to continue to support and expand a model that depends on parachuting in individuals from six to 10,000 miles away to um, implement uh, is receding in its utility. And the need now is to transfer the capacity, capability to implement to local uh, implementers. Uh, ministries of Health need to have oversight uh, of divergent funding lines that come from donors, from other, from bilateral relationships uh, that uh, require an outside reporting focus, but we need to do everything we can to keep the orchestration, oversight, management, monitoring, and evaluation uh, in a local stance. The final thing I wanted to say, in that distant demand for this kind of work, the, the absence you present to your family members, to your partner, uh, to your loved one, uh, is something that I just want to 
highlight needs to have the same level of attention as your academic pursuits. Uh, we often approach difficult work by uh, compartmentalizing our work with our, our private life and trying to keep them separate. I know from my own career, uh, I went through many years of being, uh, being unable really to go through an unpacking with my wife and children about uh, what I was in front of during the day and indeed took relief by not bringing it home for another discussion about it. But at some point you need to understand that your best support system is in that individual or individuals who are closest to you, care and indeed love you, and to not inform them of the narrative that you're in front of uh, precludes their ability to be responsive in their support, both because they don't understand what you're in front of in their own world. Uh, it would be very difficult unless they're in a medical uh, world too, to understand that. Uh, the ethical connection you have to that work and how that over uh, comes or competes or challenges your ability to be there for the responsibilities of the relationship and your home life. And all I want to say is that that deserves your attention as much as your professional contribution. Uh, and uh, it allows you to re re remain replenished, to get up and do it again uh, day after day, year after year. So I want to close here and uh, thank you for your attention to this area of work, for your appreciation of the social determinants of disease as they impact uh, our patients, our clients, our colleagues uh, on an individual basis, on a daily basis, and that each of us has a responsibility in making that better uh, by allowing and understanding that the science that we know needs to be applied to the people with the disease and that our ability to link the science with the individual who will benefit from it uh, is through an implementation effort of a delivery system that needs to be robust, uh, eyes open, uh, re nimble, responsive, and that your tool set is now very much part of making that orchestration occur. So I wanna thank you for the time and wish you only the best. And I hope you remember that your faculty uh, in the Global Health uh, Master's Program uh, remains your faculty as you move through your career. Uh, want to not just hear from you in terms of activities, but be part of your toolbox of solutions when you're confronted with problems that you cannot easily move through. So thank you so much uh, and um, good luck. We wanna thank Dr. Goosby for his powerful speech and contributions to our program, and to thank all of our faculty and mentors, especially this year under so many trying circumstances. We would also like to take a moment to thank those faculty who will be moving on at the end of this year, who have given so much to the program and impacted so many students' lives. Guys, congratulations on finishing the year and what a turbulent one it's been. I, I wearing, pur purposely wearing my UCSF uh, pandemic initiative for Ac equity and access uh, sweatshirt, because I know a number of you participated in that. And for that, I can't thank you enough. Uh, this uh, year, as you know, marked a real um, high water mark for public health at UCSF uh, and uh, for global health as well. And you were right there uh, strapped to the uh, to the roller coaster street a seat, riding it out with all of us. I'm eternally grateful for your patience, for your uh, willingness to uh, to adapt and to do things we've never done before, um, and to uh, turn it into what I hope will, uh, was an excellent learning experience. Good luck with the rest of your careers going forward. We really like to hear from you to hear you know, where are they now. Uh, and I hope that we'll see some of you uh, here at UCSF in the School of Medicine and, uh, and one of our doctoral programs in the nursing school or elsewhere. So uh, good luck, uh, bon voyage, and thanks for a, a great year. Bye-bye.
Hindu is a challenging year. Personally, academically, politically, and pandemically, you lived through the most tumultuous year in recent history, all while studying global health. And I am so looking forward to meeting you in person for the first time at the graduation party. Although I feel like I've gotten to know those of you in the Women's Health, Gender, and Empowerment course fairly well already. Thank you for always being so engaging during our life sessions, whether we examined global health reproductive policy, girls' education, or the problematic gender stereotypes in Fifty Shades of Grey. Mara Decker, Denise Dunning, and I wish you all rewarding careers in global health, maybe even in global reproductive health. Stay in touch. Congratulations. Hello, Global Health Master's students, and congratulations on your graduation. I really enjoyed teaching you the Structural Determinants class this year and learning from you. And I hope that you will maintain your structural analysis as you launch into your careers as global health professionals and advocates. This has been a difficult year, and I'm very proud of your determination um, and commitment to your education. And I know that that will serve you so well in the future. So good luck and enjoy this great celebration. Congratulations, class of 2021. I will always remember you guys. While a lot of people were muddling through this pandemic, you dove in with both feet to a really demanding program. And I just want to honor you for your perseverance and for your hard work and your sense of humor and sense of fun. We started every class with a little music and a little just a, easing the tension. And, um, you know, we hear a lot about crisis being a moment of opportunity. And boy, this one sure is. Um, there's, it's shown us how much work we have to do in global health and global health policy. Uh, this pandemic has revealed uh, the deep gulf of inequities between countries in health. And it's also shown us the shortcomings of healthcare systems that are oriented around treating disease rather than preventing it in the first place. So there's much work to do. Mm -hmm. And after a little moment of fun this summer, as you emerge both from this program and from the pandemic, uh, I, I hope that you will um, come to this field with renewed uh, vigor and uh, willingness to work by our sides to uh, take this moment of opportunity and seize it and um, do good in the world. So once again, I just really want to honor you. I'm grateful to have you as colleagues. And thank you for hanging in there. And congratulations to the class of 2021. You guys have earned this. Dear class of 2021, a huge congratulations. You have done an amazing job dealing with a very difficult year. Despite COVID restrictions, despite the fact that everything was online, you sat through patiently hours and hours of Zoom lectures, you formed a collegial and team bond, and you mastered some really challenging material. So a huge congratulations, and I wish you all sorts of luck and happiness and success as you go into the next phase of your life. I very much enjoyed meeting you online and I really hope we can meet in person sometime soon. Hi, class of 2021, it's your CAs here. We know it may feel like you've just been sitting in front of a computer all year, but really you have endured so much and we're here to remind you a little bit of what you've been through. Let's see. 42,382 pages of readings, 15 insightful classes, 60 dynamic guest speakers, 32 completed capstones, and four incredible CAs. 11 months of long learning, 3,000 error messages on R, 23 amazing professors and faculty, at least 10 trivia nights, and 14 grade scope assignments. One outchip mystery solved, six health systems mapped, 72 student presentations on COVID, 800 hours sitting in class, and 200,000. Can you see my screen? 
10,000 hours on PubMed, 85 capstone project changes, endless lasting friendships made, and one master's degree of science and global health obtained. Congratulations, class of 2021. We are so proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2021. Good day. My name is Alden Blair, and I'm the Associate Director of the Master's Program. It is my distinct pleasure to now announce the 2021 graduates. Evangeline Aurora Adana. Sophie Ahmad. Chelsea Anderson. Masi Babagoli. Anjana Barawaj. Forrest Barker. Sarah Becker. Liana Beld. Mariam Shada Carson. Rachel Christensen. Andrea Karina Correa. Penelope Jane Dodson. Isabella Dohill. Amity Elias. Diana Etuwaru. Amy Marie Farag. Divya Ganesan. Maya Ganeshan Tanvi Gurazada Winter Tekle Haley Graham Hinchcliffe Kirsten Rose Keelhold Richard Hugh Lay Deandra Lee Disha Nanjia Ariana Farah Safi
Lina Salam. Audrey Marilyn Smith. Wes Stevens. Ilya Vasilopoulos. Paola Elizabeth Vera. Ken Wu. Hey, class of 2021. Congratulations on graduating. Sullivan could not resist jumping in to say hi. Um, you all made it through this crazy year and still were able to conduct amazing capstone research projects, learn all that material, and hopefully bond with your classmates. Um, and now you're graduating with one of the hottest degrees out there. So good luck in your future endeavors. Congratulations again, and just know that you all are amazing. Congratulations, class of 2021. I think that you're the best prepared cohort for global health sciences because you completed the program during a pandemic. So you are very, very adaptable. You've seen what changes are possible when the commitment's there. So go out and make the changes that you want to see in the world. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, class of 2021. Great job in a tough year. This is Kim Baltzell and I'm Anna Muller and we're a part of the Global Action and Nursing team. And if you look behind us, we're sending our greetings from Malawi. And we wanted to give a special shout out to Winta Haile, who did a fantastic capstone based on data right here with our team in Malawi. So way to go, Winta. Congratulations, class of 2021. Y'all should be very proud of yourselves, of the hard work you've put in over the past year. Feel very grateful that you'll be joining us in the fight against health inequities, both in this country and outside of it, and centering the voices of those who shoulder the burden. Know that you have a huge alumni network who's always willing to help. And uh, on that note, I look forward to working with you all in the future. Congrats. Congratulations, class of 2021. I remember being in your shoes exactly a year ago today, which is so crazy to think. I hope you enjoyed your time with IGHS as much as I did. You have all reached a huge milestone and should be so proud of yourselves, especially since you endured all the stress that comes with a master's program during a pandemic. I mean, not everyone can say that they studied global health during a global pandemic, which is pretty cool if you ask me. I'm excited for what's to come for your graduating class, and I wish you all the best of luck with your future endeavors. Hi, GHS class of 2021. Congratulations. I remember this time last year graduating and how exciting and nerve wracking it was. And I hope you all enjoyed your time with IGHS as much as I did. I know having a program entirely online is kind of crazy, but you guys made it. And I just wanted to wish you all good luck on all your future endeavors. UCSF GHS class of 2021, congratulations. I am so excited for you to embark on this new journey, taking all your fresh new perspectives and insights and experience and taking them into the world of global health. We've all had the privilege of learning from all our top-notch mentors and pioneers of the field at UCSF. I was sitting where you are eight years ago asking myself, how do we follow into their footsteps? And what, what I've learned now eight years later is that the field of global health is still very, very new and it's evolving every single day. And UCSF gave us a mentors, tools and networks to really succeed in the world of global health, but it's up to us to find where global health will go into the future. It's up to us to define what research matters, how we share those lessons learned, how do we use the latest technology um, to create equitable care, and really what the whole ecosystem will look like. I can't wait to see what you all do to shape the future of global health. We've reached the end of our formal ceremony. As I mentioned in the beginning, we are facing new and ongoing calamities whose depth feel like an unbridgeable chasm. But this program gives me hope. 
Each of you came into this program with a very different set of passions and skills, but you had in common a desire to mitigate and prevent suffering. So when I care for my patients and witness daily tragedies, I don't despair. Instead, I see all of you and I know that you're leaving with a persistent passion and a new set of skills to begin to dismantle the structures that make us ill and build the systems that will give everyone an equal chance to be healthy. To add to that hope, you're joining the growing list of more than 330 graduates from this program who share your vision. I want to take a moment now to share one final point. My main sadness as I reflect on our program this last year is that I did not get to meet each of you in person. I felt that we were able to make real connections, but I do hope that I have the opportunity to see you live and in person sometime in the future. Truly, please come visit us. Now, do take this moment to pause and celebrate. Celebrate all you have accomplished. And then tomorrow, we'll wake up to work again in service to the world around us. I wanna say once again that we are so grateful to the UCSF team, local and international mentors, and the families and friends who have supported our wonderful graduates. To our graduates, we are proud of you and ask that you stay in touch and continue to share your amazing work and accomplishments with us. Congratulations, and we'll miss you.